Views and opinions expressed by the guests and contributors on Conklin and Company are not necessarily those of 13 ABC. Now, Conklin and Company continues with Take 3, commentary and analysis from our panel of political contributors. Welcome back, everyone. Take 3 now returns after a couple of weeks hiatus with London Mitchell of Cumulus Radio and Tom Troy of the Toledo Blade. Good to have both of you uh, on the program this week, and, and we're coming off a, a big week for Governor John Kasich. The interview uh, we had just, uh, just a few minutes ago with Sean Hegarty at the Lincoln Day Dinner. That coming off the state of the state. And London, I'll, I'll, st I'll start with you, really pushing his sweeping uh, policy changes, tax reform in his state of the state. And, and wasn't he a it. master at being able to come up with a couple of slug lines, big ideas, and uh, don't want to stop the momentum. Mm -hmm. and, well, those are, those are kind of masterful ways that he used those because that got all the play in the media, talking about big ideas, mm -hmm. talking about momentum. And he's the one that defines the momentum. Yeah, yeah. We're rolling, let's keep it right. going, yeah, right? That's right. Uh, Tom, how did he play uh, at the Lincoln Day Dinner? It's a friendly audience, obviously. It's the big uh, Republican fundraiser well, he, here. He, How'd it go? He was very, very popular, very well received. Uh, it was the same type of reception he got in Lima at the State of the State. Uh, the Republicans feel like they've got a, a winner on their hands in, in Governor Kasich. And he's actually improved his game as he went along. I mean, in 2011, he had that Senate Bill 5, which was a mm -hmm. catastrophe, right. a disaster. His State of the State speech last year in Steubenville was panned as meandering and extemporaneous and unfocused. All over his, the map, right? His speech this, this time was um, right on target. And, uh, and, and like London said, there are, there are big ideas in this budget that, that he's proposing. And he's trying to do the best he can to keep his party in line and get all the support he can from his own party. And is all that in, go ahead, London, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, not, not only his party, but that, that whole concept about increasing Medicaid. Now he's reaching out to one of the primary uh, supporters of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, the, uh, those that are disadvantaged and those with disabilities. And it wasn't all that long ago when, uh, when Kasich was first announcing his candidacy, right. some of his initial ideas, the poor and people with disabilities were saying, this guy has no heart. But he's quick to point out he's not a fan of, quote unquote, Obamacare, right. yeah. but, but says the expansion of Medicaid is necessary. Well, is he trying to, uh, to triangulate a little bit to, to pick off some cons constituencies that are maybe are reflexively or typically Democrat? Because people who are Democratic or who typically lean Democratic, have been very pleased with this Medicaid expansion on the part of Governor uh, Kasich. All right, so he comes out, he sells his plan to a friendly audience. Does he necessarily, well, there's the Medicaid aspect of this, London, that you pointed out. Does he necessarily have to go out and, 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 and sell his plan to Democrats in Ohio when, he, when the Republicans control both, the, both chambers of the House? Well, they do control both chambers. There is the possibility that aspects of his budget won't be supported by his own party. The uh, expansion of the sales tax uh, seems to be getting some uh, opposition, and uh, also the um, well, the turnpike is 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 not enthusiastically mm. received. But it's primarily the that expansion. is the cash cow, though, isn't it? Right, but it's a way of it's a way of, of of funding his things, his his projects, but without using the money, without taxing money under his authority, he can go to another source of money, which is the uh, the turnpike. Is all this setting uh, setting itself up uh, for uh, for re-election? Uh, to the state house, to the to the uh, the governor's mansion, and then beyond. 2016 is is Governor Kasich, uh, you know, name bandied about already as a as a serious threat in 2016. Well, he's he he is somebody who conceivably could run in 2016, and uh, governors have had success running for office more so than people who are in the Senate or the House, and uh, he may well have a success, something that he can package as a great success. Now, the Democrats continuously remind us that this upward trajectory where Ohio is on began before Governor Kasich took his uh, oath of office. But don't ask Kasich to acknowledge that. There was nobody before Governor Kasich. There was just him. And Ohio has gone from 41st or 48th or whatever the number is to, to sixth in the nation job in job creation. creation. Yeah, L London, uh, viable? John Kasich? I think so. You know, one of the things that Tom brought up, and, and you were talking about uh, how he used to ramble when he gave speeches, and this last one was, was right on. I think here's a man that is honing his skills, and he's learning how to, to be an orator, I mean, a, a really influential one 
one that is successful. And that, I think, uh, opens the door for him to, to be on a much broader playing field. Well, once again, didn't use a teleprompter, right, for, for this particular, was mm -hmm. it state of the state? He didn't, right. use, didn't use one? I mean, that's kind of no, his, right. his mantra, right? But it, he's getting better at it. Well, it's a subject he knows very well. And I've seen him three, give the same, very similar speech three times. He gave this speech, essentially this speech in Maumee when he uh, did that. A couple that, of weeks prior right, to the at state the service state. Uh, mm -hmm. spring uh, business. Same basic theme, same basic, basic points. So he's been honing this speech. He's been going around the, st the state giving it. Uh, let's uh, bring it a little bit closer to home. Now, did the Democrats, the l local Democrats, have a kumbaya on Thursday night, Tom Troy? Well, they've, um, they've brought Joe uh, McNamara and uh, Mike Craig back into the fold. The two of them have signed an agreement saying, well, we won't, we'll, we'll never again will we oppose the party's nominees. You remember the, the story back, the back story is that uh, Joe McNamara and Mike Craig would not support Sean right. Enright, which was the party's endorsed candidate for a vacancy. They wanted to support Mike, uh, uh, Jack Ford. Well, the two of them were threatened with being thrown out of the party, and especially McNamara, he was being threatened with being thrown off the executive committee. So he signed a piece of paper. He's so what back happens if Jack Ford runs for council? He still runs for council, right? He, he still s can support Jack Ford going forward? He can. You know, there's a question, there's a question of what, what McNamara has gained from this. Perhaps he's gained some goodwill back within the party. He's back now. He's a cooperative member of the party. He didn't get thrown out. He's a competitor now for the party's support if they choose to endorse for mayor. Right, and, and that's what we're looking uh, forward to. Is Anita Lopez going to jump in? We keep hearing about it, but, but still nothing concrete yet. And, and what's it mean for Joe McNamara, Anita Lopez? Lonnie? You know, I'm, I'm thinking that... Uh, this kumbaya you, you're talking about with with uh, with Joe now more in line with the party, maybe that will keep Anita out, because it's you know there's there's strength in in uh, in McNamara's position I think. And will, but will the unions but come to support if, if Anita Lopez stays out? That, will they, that will I they think come is the, 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 to the floor the, and say well, we support Joe McNamara for mayor. That's that's the big question mark. But I also wonder if uh, if it doesn't kind of put Joe McNamara into a corner where he's got to agree with the party in general and and can't be considered his own man as the leader of the city. Well, I mean, that's Quickly. a good point, is the, the advantage that he gained, the political advantage is that he, he kind of created a reputation for himself as the man who would stand up against the party. Is he that man now? I think he still could be. All he did was he said, okay, in the future I'll support the party's dominance. He could still... Uh, turn around and vote for who he wants to vote for. But Tom, I, I, Tom got to cut you off. Okay. See you next time. Tom London, thanks very much. Take care, everybody.